Welcome back. Tom Hartman here with you live in Reykjavik, Iceland, and with me in the studio, Stefnir, and I know I'm mangling this all, uh, Christiansen. You want to say your name correctly? Stefnir Christiansen. Thank you very much. S uh, and Step... Stefnir, just call Stepnir. me. Stefnir. <laughs> oh, with a... R uh, yeah, with like a, a R. Bit yeah. of a okay, Stefnir. And, and you're the chairman of Isafold, which is... Um, a libertarian party? No, um, I'm actually uh, no, I'm a, actually just a libertarian. In my personal views, but I'm a chair, I'm the president of a party which is well, not it's not a party. It's just a group of young people who are fighting against the European Union membership. Uh huh. Well, and and why do you think that Iceland should not become a member of what you know? What about being in the EU spooks you? Well, it spooks me really much, but um, uh, just how it works. I mean, mm. if you look at the bureaucracy and you look how the laws affect individuals, individual member countries, it's uh, I'm just afraid of this whole bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen uh, a lot of people. I mean, both on the left and the right. I've traveled not to Norway, and there were a lot of people to the left who used to talk about that they th thought the European Union was horrible because they attacked unions and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And then there are people on the right that hate the EU. I mean, there are many reasons yeah. why. It's this is very much in the United States. There is a coalition. I'm on the left, and I don't think we should be part of the WTO, NAFTA, or any of these uh, basically EU-type mm -hmm. deals. And uh, and there's many people on the right who you know strongly agree with that. Um, as a as a libertarian, you live in a social democracy where people are basically have a certain level of security from mm -hmm. from not just from cradle to grave, but from from conception to grave. Uh, prenatal care is free, um, uh, health care is covered, everything. How would you reorganize Icelandic society if you were king? For, you know? <laughs> well, first of all, I wouldn't want to be king. That's kind of anti-libertarian. Yeah. But um, I think, well, when you talk about should uh, the, uh, the country be drawn this way or that way, I mean, people have to agree. I mean, if people don't want a libertarian government, it's bad to have a libertarian if they don't want to play. They mm -hmm. have to play with the system. Mm -hmm. It's just how it is. But, but what in, would it look like if, if there was a consensus? Um, it would probably look like, well, first of all, we had to privatize a lot of things. Mm -hmm. uh, I think privatization is good because it brings competition. Well, let me be really clear on that because many, th many people say, well, we privatize things, they will start to take more money from us and just put it in their own pockets. Well, that's well. Privatizing isn't good exactly. What is good is competition, mm -hmm. because competition drives prices down and brings up the quality of services. And we've seen this in many countries. So, how do you ensure competition? That's the problem. Um, the best way I think to ensure competition to, is to have a really free market and a, and a little regulation. Because if you have a lot of regulation, it benefits the big companies mm -hmm. because they can hire lawyers to go through this, and the small company cannot grow. So, if you have a completely free market with a lot of regulation, you will have many big companies. Well, and but what we've seen in the United States with a, a far more free market than anything in Iceland or in, in Europe is that in, in virtually every industry, I mean, pick an industry, mm -hmm. um, we have ended up with monopolies uh, or duopolies or triopolies or whatever, but basically every, every major industry in the United States that... 50 years ago, before we started liberalizing, to use mm. your word, becoming more conservative, becoming more libertarian. Um, in 1981, Ronald Reagan stopped enforcing the antitrust laws, mm -hmm. and which kept companies from acquiring other companies and becoming very large. And as a result of that, you know, there's very little competition in the United States, and you know, just a couple of companies dominate every industry. How can this be a healthy thing? For, for a long time in the United States, there has been uh, increase of re in regulation a lot. I mean, government has grown every. It doesn't matter if you vote Republican or Democrat. Government has grown for a long time. I mean, Bush was crazy at the spending. He grew government, even though he told he was a Republican and. You know, well, uh, he, he grew he grew government in as much as he expanded the he, the military budget right now is yeah. three times what it was in 1998. Yeah. You know, with a couple of wars, but but with regard to regulation, um, I don't think the average person sees that in the United States. So, you know, there's there's people talk about it in the abstract, but you know, because you've got some billionaires who own oil companies who don't like the fact that 
uh, in particular, they're concerned about carbon dioxide, you know, that the rules are going to be coming mm. down the road that are going to make it more expensive for them to refine petroleum products. But, you know, if that's a social good, what's wrong with that? I mean, how, how do you capture, here's the question, mm -hmm. how do you capture externalities? You've got oil companies that are refining oil and, and in the United States, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of cancer deaths a year as a consequence of, of, of the use of oil. And yet we're paying for that, taxpayers, not the companies. Mm -hmm. And and we spend we have a huge military budget to protect the flow of oil. Taxpayers pay for that, not the oil companies. I'm against That's, that. So you're opposed to that? Yeah, I'm very opposed to the military complex. So, but but, the, but then what you're saying is, but how do you capture those externalities? How do you capture the costs that, in a free market, companies mm -hmm. dump on the on the public? I mean, I'm not saying I have a perfect solution. I mean, mm. uh, there isn't any perfect solution to everything. What I'm saying, why I'm a libertarian is mostly because of economic issues. Mm -hmm. Because when the economic is free and when it grows, people become prosperous. And that has led to the best societies, in my opinion. Because mm -hmm. when we have the big governments, a burden of like regulation, the economy shrinks. And that makes everyone poorer. Also, the government—they can have less services. I mean, we see—we saw it in when Russia fell. I mean, what happened? They had a uh, the, the the economy shrank well, and it's shrank. Kind of, they, kind of they night and day. But in yeah. the United States, when we saw deregulation of our banks, what did our banks do? They went crazy and they brought us down. Well, you have to understand when it comes to the financial system, it's it's controlled by monetary policy. And what kind of monetary? We have a ridiculous monetary policy because bank creates money out of thin air. Literally, mm -hmm. because they take money from the Federal Reserve, well, they get a loan yeah. from the Federal Reserve, and they can multiply that money a lot. Yeah, yeah. and, and okay, so this, and now we're getting into the arcane of banking, which, uh, uh, Steph Nier, yeah. uh, Chris Jonesson, thank you so much for being with us. Today. Thank you. I appreciate you dropping by.